Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. This is episode 114 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and in this show, we're thinking about our online lesson systems and planning processes. Welcome back, beautiful teachers. This episode is part of a special season that we're doing, a special series of podcast episodes that is all about leveling up your online teaching. So if you've been getting into online teaching, as a lot of us have been, and you're starting to get comfortable with it, you're pretty okay with the systems, you're not in panic mode anymore, you might be thinking about leveling things up, making things a bit better, making your systems run more smoothly, upgrading your tech, anything you can do to make the experience better for your students and help them learn more efficiently in this online lesson format. Whether you're doing online lessons right now or whether you're on a break from them right now but you think you might be back at them or just using them as a makeup lesson option, this is a great series of podcast episodes to follow through with to think about all the little improvements that you might make to your online music lessons and pick out the ones that are most relevant to you, most applicable to your situation. So this is the third episode in this unofficial series and we're talking today about planning and systems but we've already covered equipment and tools in the last two episodes. They were quite substantial episodes as many of you long-term listeners will know these Our episodes here on Vibrant Music Teaching are normally quite bite-sized because I tend to be a bit succinct with my words, I hope in a good way. However, those were chunkier episodes because there was a lot to cover in terms of explaining these technical things and all that stuff. So if you want to go back and check those out, that'll help you with the tech and the software and the tools and all of that stuff so that you can make your setup as good as it can be or as suited to your particular situation as you can. So today we're talking about planning and systems and I want to start by discussing some basics of your systems. So first of all if you're using Zoom as a lot of teachers are, if you're using Zoom and if you're using the system where you have the same Zoom link for everyone. Now at the very start of the lockdown back in March when a lot of people were switching to online lessons I recommended actually having different links for each student and I still think that worked very well for me in the beginning because it meant that each student could log into that link, they weren't interrupting anyone else and they could get things set up without me putting them in a waiting room. It just gave them that extra bit of space for them to test out their setup and I know a lot of students did find that easier because they were able to test things, right? To The parents were able to log in position the camera in different places and see how things work. So that's why I did it that way initially. Then after some of the Zoom updates and the password requirements and all of that, I switched to having one link for each teacher and having the waiting room set up and a password. The disadvantage to that is that the student can't really see their camera view when they log into the waiting room. In fact, several of them have said to me, Oh, I wish it would just show me a preview of the camera when I'm in the waiting room. Maybe there's some way to enable that, but they certainly haven't found it and it would be handy. However, that does mean that you just have one link for each teacher or one link for you if you're a solo teacher and that's it, which keeps things simple in terms of links. So if you're using that type of a setup where you have one link that you use for all your students, save it. Have it somewhere handy. I talked about text expanders in the last episode. So you can save this as a little text expansion so that it automatically fills your Zoom link, your standard Zoom link, when you type a certain code, as it were. So for me, most of my text expansion codes start with the square bracket because I don't use that otherwise. So I would type square bracket Zoom or something like that to, and that would expand into my link. The reason I say to save it is not for yourself. When you log into the Zoom app, your meetings probably are showing up there anyway, or it's easy for you to save it. However, you will often get requests from students for that link. Not everyone has 
you know, bookmarks in their browser saved and stuff like that. Not everyone is really technical in that way or even has basic skills like that, right? And so there's a lot of them I find are hunting for my original email where I shared the link. And so sometimes they just can't come across it and they'll quickly email me or text me and ask for that link. So have that on hand if you don't already. The next basic part of your system is to have some email templates set up for common emails you need to send out around online lessons. That could be reminders about the email link or about the time that the lesson starts. So if you don't have that automated or have a template at least, definitely set one up. And it can also be to do with sending on assignment sheets to your students. So I have a Gmail template for the assignment sheets and that is just can just do that right within Gmail these days. And what it says is something like, hi, space, hi, comma. So I'm leaving a space for their name, but I don't write it. I don't put anything in just in case I forget, then it's just going to say hi. So that's fine. And then it says, please find attached the lesson notes from this week. Any questions, just let me know. Something like that. And then warm regards, Nicola. So Having a template like that in place might seem silly. It might seem like, well, I can just type a few words. I mean, I'm not that lazy. But you honestly, it's just pointless to type the same thing over and over again. And no one is going to notice or care if they do notice that it's the same every time. In fact, I think they assume it's automated. I actually haven't automated that process since I'm attaching a PDF and um, it's not done through an automatic system. But it is as close to automatic. I mean, it literally takes me 10 seconds, 5 seconds to shoot off that email after the lesson is over. So if you don't have a template or an automatic process for sending out the assignment sheets, then please set one up. And the last thing which you need to make your systems run smoothly is to have your students' books, right? Not all about digital apps and widgets. You need to have a copy of your students' books. It is honestly so difficult if you don't have their pieces, especially for the younger students or more beginner students. For the more advanced students, yes, you can sort of get by, I find, because, you know, you can say to them, well, what does it look like it on the third line, like, or gesture on the piano a bit? There's a bit that goes like this, it's on the third line down, kind of thing. And you can navigate that way, okay, but still, honestly, it is a, mo- a lot easier if you have their books. I made the mistake of, so one of my students was doing an exam and we work from photocopies of the music. We have the music, okay, so I'm not, don't worry, I'm not doing anything dodgy here, but we photocopy the music in order to highlight it and write all over it. So when we started online lessons, that was the version she had, was the photocopied version with scribbles all over it, not the fresh, clean book version. And I had the book in my studio. And then at some point I gave her the book of this particular piece that it was in, and I forgot to take a copy for myself. And I couldn't get my hands on another copy of this particular book. It was quite an obscure. Debussy. Yeah, basically, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get my hands on it. So that was a silly mistake I made. And I certainly, we did navigate it okay, right? I got through it. But it would have been so much easier if I'd just taken a quick photo of the book. Why didn't I do that? Anyway, so if you don't have a copy of all your students' books, that is a basic part of your systems that you can definitely put in place. Once you have those things, I want you to start thinking about how you do your lesson planning and assignments for your online lessons. So as I may have mentioned before on the podcast, I make all my assignment sheets in advance. So I was almost really well placed for doing online lessons because all my assignment sheets are digital anyway and I make them before the lessons, which is what works extremely well for online lessons, is having those assignment sheets already on your computer and then you can just email them to your students and you also have a copy of everything that was talked about last time. So the basic process I follow is to have a file with a page for each week and notes about the piece and what they need to work on in it and any practice strategies I want them to follow and 
technical exercises they need to do, basically everything they need to practice and how they need to practice it and any reminders. That all goes on a sheet and I prepare that before the student's lesson. Then during the lesson, for an in-person lesson, I would just have that printed out and I would cross out bits and pieces and rewrite bits and pieces as I need to. But normally I can predict pretty well what we're going to do and, and how the advice that I'm going to be giving them to take home. However, if there's changes, I would just cross them out and write them by hand. In online lessons, I can just edit it right here on my computer. I'm sitting at my office desk anyway during my lessons and I just change things, adjust things, make extra notes as needed. And then I export that just that page. So I have a file with all the weeks together. And then I export just that page and send it using my email template to the parents. You can see me doing this whole process of putting together these sheets in a YouTube video. We'll leave a link to it in the show notes, which is at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 114. Or if you want to search on YouTube, just look up planning online lessons or planning online piano lessons or something like that, and it should pop up there. It was a YouTube live that I did a while back. So I do that in Adobe software. You absolutely don't need to. That's just what I have on hand. However, we have templates that will work in Google Docs, and we also have templates that are in PDF version. So members can find the links to those again on the show notes page, vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 114. If you go there, you'll see the links directly to our Google Docs template, if you prefer to use Google Docs, or our PDF files, which you can open and type into in Adobe Reader, which is totally free if you don't have it already. So you just open up those PDFs and you can literally just type into them. It doesn't take any technical knowledge whatsoever. You just click on the boxes and type what you want to type. So that's two great options for doing them digitally. Whatever you're doing, just export one week at a time and send it to your parents. And it's a nice, easy system to follow if you don't have one already. Whatever system you are using, whether it's one of those or something you've come up with yourself, Make sure you have a place to jot down notes to yourself easily. So the way InDesign is set up, where I make my assignment sheets, there's actually space around the page. (laughs) And so I just make secret notes to myself there if I need to, which will just be, you know, I might write in big, bold letters, next week, game, four steps and skips. Like if I want to remember that uh, this particular student is struggling with, with seeing those or something like that. If you don't have something like that on screen, I would suggest just having a separate app open that you can jot down notes to yourself. Just make sure it's organized by student and easy for you to find later. Or just keep a notebook on your desk to jot down notes to yourself. Either will do absolutely fine. The other side to my planning then is about buddy time and groups. So during the lockdown, during our online lessons, I continued doing buddy lessons with my students, which means that the lessons consisted of some solo time with me and some time with another student as well. So I have two students and me, and then each of them have their solo time as well. So that's my buddy lessons. Um, Lots of info about that on the site and elsewhere. So if you just Google buddy piano lessons, you'll come up with lots of resources from us if you're curious about that. But for planning that buddy time, things obviously look a little bit different. You also may need to plan, even if you don't do buddy lessons, you may be planning some type of groups. So I did sessions I called Practice with Pals, which were informal group. They're what I replaced my group workshops with. They're just informal little sessions where any student was welcome to come along and we would learn a practice technique and play some games together. So I needed to plan for those and for my buddy time. And for that, I used the most fancy tool you can imagine. You ready for this? It's called a post-it note. Yes, good old-fashioned post-it notes. So I would just jot down. Now I'm planning it. I'm compiling resources and putting things together on the computer. But in terms of actually what am I going to do, what am I going to do after that, I just write it on a post-it and stick it on my desk. Because I have everything else on the computer for the solo lesson time, it's just handy for me to run through that and be able to switch things on the computer in that order and and have it all organized that way, have everything open and ready to go. But I have that posted just to say, okay, we're going to play this game. 
then we're going to learn about this thing, then we're going to do our composing project together, and then this and then this, right? So some of the things we might be doing in that time, obviously I mentioned for the practice with PAL session, that's about practice technique. So I would put together some fun themed technique. And again, if you want tips on different practice strategies, you can go to the YouTube channel to check those out. I've talked about that a lot there. So if you look up practice with pals, that'll probably pop that up. The other thing we do in those online lessons, in those uh, practice with pals sessions, and in my buddy lessons as well, is online games. So we play games using Google Slides. This was something that members started doing, Vibrant Music Teaching members started doing, and they inspired me to put together some official versions as well. So members started adapting our physical games in order to use them in PowerPoint. And then I started adapting some of our newer games, or all of our newer games, I should say, so that you can use them in Google Slides as well. So we have several, quite a few now, slides versions of games, and those can be played on the screen. And then there's also the Web Wonders series of games that doesn't require any equipment. So it would be a mixture. I would be planning a mixture of all of these things, along with the surprise starters, which are fun themed kickoffs to the buddy lesson time. They can be used in solo lessons as well. There's a whole set of those in the video library. So if you're a member, go to the video library and you'll see the set of surprise starters there. There's about, there's 11, I think I made in the end. So there's a lot to choose from and they're a great way to inject some creativity into your online lessons. The other thing we would do in our buddy lesson time was our projects like the collaborative composition project. And I detailed all of how we did that in another YouTube live. So we're gonna leave the links to all of these things. I know I've mentioned a lot of links, right? So if you don't wanna remember, all of them, just remember one thing, which is vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 114. If you look up our show notes page there, you'll see links to all of the things I'm mentioning here. We're going to be talking more about injecting fun into your online lessons and using games in online lessons next week. But for now, what I just wanted to mention was how I'm putting that together, which is simply on a post-it note. It's nothing fancy. For other group lessons I sometimes use a google sheet however go with what works for you but something simple that's just going to be a list that you can refer to is best for group lessons because you just have that little bit less brain space because you've got more people paying attention to you that it's harder to look up you know different things and think thoroughly about things you really need to be on the ball and ready and have just a few key words to remind you what the next thing is that you're going to do. So those are my basic systems for online lessons. I would love to hear yours. I'd love to hear what part of your lesson planning or your assignments and your other systems need work. What do you need the most help with? What from today were you thinking, oh, that would be better than the system I'm using at the moment? Share your thoughts with me on Facebook, in our Facebook group, or on the show notes page at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 114. Coming up next week, as I said, we're going to be talking about making your online lessons fun, <laughs> making them engaging and fun. So I'm known for all the games that I create for Vibrant Music Teaching. And since we are in a season when online lessons need to be more of a permanent option, we don't want to be leaving that stuff out, right? We still want to be having fun with our students and helping them learn really thoroughly. So that's what we're going to be discussing next week on the show. I hope you'll join me back here for that. And I'll see you back here for episode 115. If you want access to all our wonderful slides, versions of the games and everything else we have to help you teach online really effectively, you can sign up to Vibrant Music Teaching Membership. Just go to vmt.ninja and become a member today.